show you some things that we're doing here. We're uh, gonna de-rust some, some wide five drum. So this is the condition now. And this is what the inside looks like. Pretty rusty. But I've been de-rusting parts and I wanna show you how we're gonna do this. All right, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna take this here drum and put it in this, this here, and we're gonna fill it with vinegar. Now this is uh, vinegar here with parts. I got a whole bunch of old rusty parts. And uh, take a look at this draft tube. See how rusty that is? That is what this draft tube looked like before I put it in. So uh, this sat in there probably five days, which is fine. Uh, this is a F1 steering box, and it has come out completely de-rusted. Inside and out, it's just as clean as can be, and this thing was all rusty. So, um, I'm going to pour the vinegar in, the regular old vinegar, and we'll see how much we get out of this bottle. Um, we probably may, we may not be able to cover the whole thing. So a lot of people talk about evaporust, and evaporust is a great product, but this bottle of vinegar cost me, I think, uh, $2 and change, $2.50, $2.69 maybe. And one bottle, I have like two bottles in there in that mess. And uh, another thing, uh, evaporust has kind of a, a life that it only it can only rust so much de-rust so much metal and um, this vinegar has been here for weeks I think a month and I've I've uh, de-rusted all kinds of parts in there and it's still going strong so we're gonna do a test here we're gonna fill the rest of the way with water and then we're going to come look at it in one day and then two days and all that you know you've seen it before and we're going to show you how well this de-rusts. So we got this Model A rear here for a roller. And what uh, what's really cool, we're just going to use it for roller, for a roller. But the wide five drum fit right on there. Same bearing, fit right on that. I don't know if you can run it. I'm sure the shaft is fitting fine. I mean, the nut went on. It fits just like a, um, like a Model A drum. So I'm pretty sure that this yes... This wide five drum fits on this Model A rear end, and I think you could run it that way. Uh, I'm not sure about the diameter of the brakes. Don't quote me on any of that. <laughs> we're talking about brakes. But um, what we're doing here, chasing chickens, what we're doing here is we're gonna build this frame. So I got this flathead on here, and I moved it back because I, Put these motor mounts in the wrong place. Here's a Model A spring. Taking that off. We're gonna hope, uh, we're gonna take some leaves out of that and drop it a little bit. And we're gonna use one of these 32 axles, 32 to 36, uh, the not the heavy duty one. And uh, I put these, these uh, flathead motor mounts in the wrong place and uh, I remembered push them just push them right up as far as you can get and then uh, when I tried to put the motor in there the the uh, the pulley hit the cross member you can cut these cross members and get a little space but it didn't work at all so um, I just remembered push them all the way up as far as far forward as you can get them but it's not the true, and it made sense at the time because these backing plates, I did not put these backing plates in here. And so the backing plates gotta come off. The motor mounts, I just tacked them, luckily, and I gotta move them back. And what I'll do is I'll take the information off my Roadster, and uh, you can see that cross member has been cut. And um, you can see how far back that motor mount is. 
This one has a bitchin' firewall. It's got the Mustang steering, 68-ish Mustang steering. I just painted the radiator. I had a little crack in the cheap aluminum radiator. They're only, they're less than 200 bucks, but they don't last long. So I finally painted this radiator. I fixed a leak and uh, I'm gonna run some copper tube from, from here and I'll probably follow the hose and go like this. And I got this stainless tank and this is my overflow tank. So it's got this funny looking plastic uh, beat piece of hose here. And what I did is when I bought all those parts, when I got all that lot of parts, I got some pieces of copper. So I'm gonna plumb the overflow with copper. I was thinking about going down like this, bend it here, get it to go in here and go like this. Um, but I may follow the hose down. And, and then turn this around and I'll put that bottom over here and then I'll run the copper tube right up that radiator hose. I don't know. That might look hokey. But we're gonna try that and hopefully I, I tack welded that leak and the radiator was right here where the bracket is. Tiny little leak it was pissing out. So um, hopefully that uh, will work out and like I say we're going to work on this frame we're going to build a cross member we're going to mount a flatty in it we're probably going to put the rescue dog on there and uh, we still got to get this Model A on seas we got a lot of work to do a lot of stuff to do here at Model A Metal and uh, I'll be back with that um, with that rust test Okay, so that wide five drum is going to go on this spindle. So I have one brand new spindle. I want to show you this. And this came with a bunch of parts. It is brand spanking new. NOS. It was wrapped in Cosmoline, which is, I guess, what they used to do for stuff in the war. Or uh, surplus. So some of this stuff might be army surplus. I also got a bunch of engine bearings. I got all these cases cases of engine bearings these are all uh, rod bearings I think rods and mains and um, they're wrapped in cosmoline so it's this gooey stuff it's a gooey paper thing so this whole thing was wrapped up and I thought it'd be interesting to show you <laughs> it's a brand new piece brand spanking new I got it basically for free so uh, I think that says Ford on there F-O-R I don't know what that says, but it's factory, it's brand spanking new, new bushings, everything. So another thing that I wanted to show was how I would degrease these parts. So these are the bearings and the cap and the nut and the washer and the seal. Won't use the old seal. Uh, and how I'm gonna degrease this. So I took some blue jeans and I cut it, cut it into small squares it's easier to do it with scissors than it is with a knife. I'm going to take these parts and I'm going to wipe them and wipe as much grease off them as I can. And then I'm going to put them in a, this is a degreaser that you would use before you paint a car. And you would wipe it down with the degreaser. And I'm going to put it into that and put it in this liquid and just slosh it around. And I'm going to show you how to clean up greasy parts. So I've taken these parts and I've wiped them with the piece of blue jean here and uh, here's the cap I'm gonna wipe that grease out of there and I'm going to then degrease it in here and then I'm gonna put this in I'm gonna put this in with the drum and let it de-rust and there's the nastiest part of all the, the nut it's full of grease so I'm gonna wipe out and take off as much grease as I can off of this and then throw it in this so you can see already, it's in a very short amount of time, this uh, automotive body stuff cleans this stuff right up. Takes the grease right off. So then you just wipe these down, and even if they're still a little greasy, you know, you get all, make sure there's no dirt, but there was no dirt in these bearings. And these are the 1939 bearings that came out of the wide pipe drums that we have in the de-ruster. So more on the de-rusting, like I say, this cap will go in with the wide pipe. Note also, check it out. Also that this, um, 
this amount of fluid will degrease these parts. They don't even have to be submerged completely. So in the spirit of being cheap and only using a tiny bit, you only you got like uh, a couple of shot glasses full, maybe three or four shot glasses full, I don't know, four ounces of liquid. And I actually could have done the other side if I took the other side apart, the bearings and the um, washer and the nut. Could have done that with the same amount. So I'm gonna pull these out and after I wipe these clean uh, with a clean rag, I will, um, they will be ready to go. Grease them up a little bit just for rollers and uh, get that uh, drum on that bearing, on that spindle. So these are really cool. So these are our bearings all cleaned up in washers and stuff, but I don't know if you can see it, but there's a Ford logo on there. Yeah, this is better. There's a Ford logo on there, and there is on this one too. And it's on that bottom. It's a Ford logo that's swept. It's really cool. Okay, okay so we're going to look at how crusty this thing is. It's all rusty. Crusty. So this is going into vinegar with... Uh, the drum. This is going in with the drum. You can see all that crust right there. So we're going to put this in the vinegar and we're going to check out how it comes out of the vinegar all de-rusted. Alright, so a couple more pieces that I want to clean up and show you how to clean up. So uh, first of all, the Cosmoline came off with the, uh, with the uh, fast drying degreaser, which is not drying fast, luckily, because we're still using it. So this, uh, the bearings are clean, wash or not. Um, there's still a little cosmoline on this thing, but um, it's clean, ready to go, ready to use. And these are the kingpins. So these are some old used kingpins. And there's rust and there is uh, grease. So we're gonna take off the grease in the dirty degreaser. And then we're gonna throw these into the vinegar with the brake drums and let them soak and see how clean they come out. So, all right, here we are, day four. And uh, I was thinking of doing that, check it the first day, check it the second day, all that stuff. It is, uh, I put this in on Monday night, it's Friday afternoon, so it's been like four days. And when you see this stuff, it's really working. Okay, I kinda wanna get rid of that stuff, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. So that is rust that it has taken off of parts. So we got a, I put a bunch of parts in here and we're going to um, check them all out. This one was really rusty. We'll take a look at this. This one had already been de-rusted and then I left it. I didn't wipe it down uh, and it rusted again. So I got it in there and I'm finally, hopefully gonna finish it up soon. But we got a wide five drum in here. And we got some king pins, uh, a couple of, uh, no, just one, one spindle. But there's a variety of parts in here. So let's see what's, what we got. Oh yeah, so we got a, um, these, so check this out. The rust, these were rusty. These are the uh, spring U-bolts, Model A front. And they were really rusty. And they could use a little more time, but you can see the rust coming off of that. So, that'll take a few more days. I'm gonna put that aside. This is a wrench that I found at the dump. Okay. And it's hooked on something. And it was completely rusty. You can see that rust coming off. So we'll put this wrench to the side. Put that to the side. 
and put it back in. I think I found the cap, so remember this cap. So let's take a look. This is a uh, stainless brush from Harbor Junk. So this cap was rusty. I think some of this evaporated. But you can see how that has come clean. I'm going to let it go a little more to get the rust out of these threads. But basically this has been de-rusted. And maybe I'll... Uh, Maybe I'll put a side-by-side -side photo of this cap before it went in on Monday night. That's pretty clean. I still want to get the rust out of these um, out of these threads. So there's that cap. That'll go back in. Let's take a look at this. This I found outside. I think it had been outside for years and years. And you can see that this will be a usable piece. And you can see all this rust down here. It's going to come right off. Oh, baby. Off the shaft out of the threads, out of the keyway. I'm really interested in that wide pipe drum. So I want to get them painted, get them on the car. Well, I need the spindle too. So this was a pretty rough spindle. You can see the pitting, but you can see the, the rust is gone. I still got to do this part of it in the back but this will be actually be a usable piece depending on how well no the seal's never going to work on this but it'll be good for a roller that seal will probably never work but like i say use it for a roller here's our f1 steering box this thing was completely de-rusted at one time, and then I let it, I didn't wipe it off, I let it sit. And the rust came back, but it's just flash rust. And it'll all come off. So we'll be working on this F1 box some more. We got to get it totally submerged. All right, we had some rusty old king pins. Did the did the vinegar eat the seal? No, the seal's still there. So these king pins will be usable as rollers. They were rusty and greasy. Washer's got rust on it. So, four days. I mean, this one didn't have a lot of stuff on it. Get that grease. And the idea is to get it dry, get all the vinegar wiped off of it. And that, again, will be usable for a roller. Roller means that it's just going to roll around the garage. It's not going to go on the street. Get these grease slots clean. So, the, the vinegar also cuts the grease. So now, we're going to rinse it off with water. And dry it completely. 
And as long as you dry it and wipe it down, it will not re-rust. If you leave it sitting out in the air with the oxygen and the, uh, and the vinegar on there, thing will flash rust in a matter of minutes and it'll rust really badly. So this kingpin might be a little, little rough, but whatever. Again, we're going to use them. So, all right, what else we got in here? Oh, we have some, uh, there's another spring perch U-bolt. We have these uh, spring perches, and they were rusty. A little bit, not bad. Get it all out of here. There was some rust on there. We're going to get it all off. So that's pretty dang clean. Uh, rinse it with water. Dry it off. Okay. So that's clean. Very usable. There's going to be another one in there. I'm kind of getting all the parts around the outside. Here's another kingpin that we want to use. There is a clean kingpin. Rinse it off. Dry it off. Oil those up. All right, we should have another spring perch in here. Here it is. This one was rustier than the other one. Rust coming right off. Very usable. This one still might have some dirt and grease on it. Okay. What else? This is the part of the spring bolt. It was rusty. You can see that rust coming right off of there. So this rust here. This one needs a little more time. But it was rusty. So these went in that Monday night, that same Monday night. Here's even worse rust here. And you can see it's all coming off. kind of number on here. A 5-61 something like that. This will go back in and here is what I'm really interested in. See that clean metal? It's pitted, but it's clean. So what's going to happen when I put this in here? Oh, that shouldn't have had air bubbles. I don't get it. I don't know. But where these nuts are, that foamy stuff that's on the ground there that we saw when we first opened this up, um, eventually where these nuts are, there will be three little dollops of foam that are working on that um, 
that are working on those nuts. There again, clean metal. Getting it down to clean metal. So it's a little time consuming, but uh, it works and we're gonna leave them in for days. I'll have to get some more vinegar. So these parts are all going in. These are going in. We really need to finish this, finish this bad boy. And this was totally rusty and you can see all the rust coming off it. So we actually need a bigger bat of uh, a bigger container of vinegar. So this is four days. Like I said, this this was already clean. A little grease in there, you can see it. So had I not wiped these off and rinsed them off, these would have started flash rusting already. So anywhere there's a little vinegar, it's going to. But these are basically, like I say, for a roller, these are usable parts. Yeah. Shit, looks like my tub sprung a leak. It's all leaking out the side here. So I'm gonna have to get a new tub. But also, uh, there's an extra drum. These are some F1 drums. There's some wide five wheels, and I want to de-rust these. So we're gonna wind up taking the rust off these. We have a horrible freight tire machine, 20 bucks. And this thing goes in the lug nut hole. I got these Jag wheels, and I want to steal these tires. They're 16 inch. We're gonna steal these tires off these Jag wheels that I got cheap. And but there's no lug nut holes. So this wheel actually does not fit on that gizmo. So I gotta figure out how we're gonna deal with that. You can see here it's clean. Oh, you can see all that just come off. So you can see this rust coming off. So this uh, solution here. I put it in clean brand new vinegar uh, but my my bucket broke and it started leaking out all the vinegar so I threw it in this this um, bin and this bin has been going for I think a couple months and it is still de-rusting so I think if it were in some fresh vinegar it might have done a better job but anyway this needs more time you can definitely see that compared to this. So let's take this rusty spot right here. We're going to brush it. And it's coming down to bare metal. So obviously this needs more time. So we got some heavy stuff here. Some of it might be grease. You can see this rust coming right off. So here's a rusty spot right here. And that stuff's coming right off. Cool. Let's look at the inside. So it's getting there. So what we'll do, knowing that we're running out of light, we're going to leave this in here. I'll leave it this way so there's no air pockets. I'll leave that in there and let it get some more time. So what else do we got in here? Some nuts. Okay. A U-bolt. So this wrench was rusty. I brushed this off yesterday. So 
This wrench was completely rusty as you can see now. And I am going to brush it out. It goes right down to clean metal. So I found this at the dump. I just threw it in here for uh, to show you how, how well it works. So it's pretty rusty. And that's bare metal. So I'm going to leave this in here too. It's like a large nut wrench. Oh. This was completely rusty. And now it's clean. I'm going to let it go a little longer, but what I'm going to do here, I'm going to put this one in a cleaner, cleaner solution. So here I have a wheel, an entire wheel, a backing plate. This backing plate's almost finished. Totally de-rusted. This thing was crusty. I think it's probably in another video. And we're doing some rust on the inside of that wheel. That's a wide five wheel. So uh, a little time consuming, but um, if you want to get these parts rust free, this is an easy way to do it. Time consuming, but easy. All right, so here's the 28 Roadster. This week, uh, we had, actually for the last couple of weeks, I've been driving it with this tiny pinhole here. So this is one of those cheap aluminum radiators that you can get on eBay for $186 free shipping. And it's awesome that you can get a radiator that inexpensive when the one you want is 900 bucks, nine to 1300 bucks for a good one, but um, they fail. And this is my second one. But all I had wrong was this pinhole right here. And what I had to do, wound up doing, and I don't weld aluminum. I, this was my first aluminum weld. I kind of had to booger weld the whole thing. So every time I welded a spot and fixed it, it I think that it would shrink and then make, create another crack. So I had to get a lot of uh, welds. And finally what I did is I pressure tested it before. So I went through two rounds of uh, taking this thing apart, taking all the uh, coolant out of it, and checking and, you know, welding the, the leak, putting it all back together. So finally I decided to pressure test the thing, and I would cap up all the uh, openings. It's got five openings, so I just put the cap on, and I capped up three of the uh, hose openings, and I blew air into the last one, and I'd squirt dish soap on it, and if it bubbled, then I still had a leak. So that happened, and then finally I booger welded it all up, and uh, I got to practice my aluminum welding. But that was my first ever aluminum repair. So the 28 now has a painted radiator, and it doesn't have that junky looking aluminum radiator anymore. This one's got the APA. Might put a cam in this. It runs too good to take it apart. But um, I'm going to focus on this car for a little while and try to get that motor running again. Hopefully I'll be able to. I think I gotta get a nice thick copper gasket for the gasket, torque it right, and hopefully be okay. Uh, here we are putting the wide five wheels on. We're gonna put a drop 32 to 36 axle on there. It's only a two inch drop. Okay. Purchase. Uh, we're gonna Get a drop main leaf spring for this one so that'll wind up being i don't know a three and a half inch drop two and a half inch drop not much maybe three and then we're going to decide what to do with the rear i think we're going to put a model a rear end with a t-spring and maybe maybe buy the uh the dropped reverse eye spring main spring so uh i'm not going to get the whole spring I'm going to get the dropped, uh, the reverse I main and use this spring. And it's fine. Plenty of material there. So that's what's going on with this one. I got a flatty in a barn somewhere that was rebuilt and I haven't run it in years and I need to get it running to make sure that the valve seats don't, don't uh, rust up. And uh, I looked at that motor. It has um, new lifters, new springs. And the guy... Um, put new uh, sp um, 
new piston rings in it, a bunch of work to that motor. So we're going to get that motor over here, and this is basically going to be like a, an engine, a rolling engine test stand for a while so that we can um, get flatheads running and we can hook them up on this. We'll put a battery box in it. We'll put a temporary gas tank on it. And we're going to make a rolling flathead V8 engine test stand because I got a couple of things to do. I got a couple of motors to fix here. So this one is machined, ready to go, uh, 59. So that's a bunch of stuff that's happening here at Model A Metal in the shop. Hopefully we'll get that coupe going again. We'll work on the rescue dog. We're always keeping the 28 running. And we'll play with some motors. Plenty to do.